Here is the Ring of Barahir, he said, the token of our kinship from afar, and here also are the shards of Narsil. With these you may yet do great deeds, for I foretell that the span of your life shall be greater than the measure of men, unless evil befalls you or you fail at the test. But the test will be hard and long. The scepter of Enuminas I withhold, for you have yet to earn it. Hail and well met, my friends. Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today I wanted to take a look at the Ring of Barahir, as we will discuss its importance and history. I'll link some related articles and videos in the description and cards above as well. Thank you all for joining me today, let's begin our tale about this historic ring and its renown within the Legendarium. Unlike some other rings in Middle-earth, the Ring of Barahir had no special powers or apparent magic pertaining to it. It was purely ceremonial in nature. This ring is depicted containing the likeness of two serpents intertwined with eyes made of emeralds. The heads of the two serpents met beneath a crown of golden flowers. One upheld the crown, and the other devoured it. This was the emblem of the House of Finarfin, of which Finrod Felagund was a part. Its importance lied not in its power, for it had none. Rather, it was the symbol that the ring portrayed that was important. In times of dearth and darkness, or life and light, any who saw the ring recalled the elves of Valinor and the men who had alliance with them. In later ages it became the symbol of the descendants of Elros and Elendil, and it would mark its bearer as the King of Arnor and eventually the reunited kingdom itself, while also being a token of betrothal between Aragorn and Arwen. But we will explore all of this more in depth shortly, now let's discuss the history of the Ring of Barahir. Forged in the Years of the Trees in Valinor by the Noldor, the Ring of Barahir, before it held that name, was born by Finrod son of Finarfin, who was yet the son of Finwë. Finrod brought it with him out of the west during the exile of the Noldor, and he wore it for the first few centuries of the First Age. Finrod became the Lord of Nargothrond, the dwelling of elves that he had constructed underground near the river Narog in Beleriand, and he carried the ring with him during all of this time. But then the Dagor Bragolok, the Battle of Sudden Flame, came to pass, and Finrod hastened to the north with a company of elves from Nargothrond to aid his kin. But in the Fen of Sadek, Finrod was cut off from his folk with a small company, and there he would have perished or would have been captured if not for the valor of Barahir, a man of the House of Beor, who rescued Finrod with a company of brave men. Then Finrod gave Barahir his ring with a promise of friendship and aid to his kin before returning to Nargothrond. Thus the ring passed to Barahir, who wore it until his demise at the hands of orcs. Leading a band of outlaws in the forest of Dorthonion, Barahir's hideout and the location of his men were discovered by Melkor's servants and Sauron himself, and then orcs found the men and slew them. The butcher Gorgul took the hand of Barahir as proof of their victory until Barahir's son, Baron, who had been away during the slaughter, pursued the orcs and slew Gorgul and escaped. He had avenged his father and he buried the hand with the rest of his father's remains, but he kept and wore the ring of his father. The ring would aid him throughout his life, as he bore it aloft in Menegroth, the halls of Thingol and Doriath as proof of his identity and self-respect. Baron also used the ring of Barahir upon the plain near to Nargothrond, as he held it aloft to seek the aid of Finrod and to not be slain by Finrod's elves who kept watch upon the plain. Finrod did not need to see the ring to recognize the kin of Beor and Barahir, and Finrod also fulfilled his promise that he had made to Barahir, for he aided Baron on his quest for the Silmaril. Finrod's promise cost him his life, for he saved Baron from a wolf in the pits of Sauron's fortress of Tol in Gowerhoth. Again, as Baron's story tells, the ring itself had no power, but it commanded the respect and loyalty of elves and men alike. The ring would remain with Baron throughout his adventures, and it would pass to the son of both Baron and Luthien, Dior, and afterwards it would come to Dior's daughter Elwing, and then eventually to her son Elros, brother of Elrond. Thus, as Elros became the first king of Numenor, the ring would be an heirloom of his house until Tar Elendil gave it to his eldest child and daughter Silmarion, instead of his son and heir Tar Menelder, for Silmarion was not allowed to succeed Tar Elendil. It is thanks to her and her descendants that the Ring of Barahir survived the downfall of Numenor. It seems the sword Narsil may have also followed this same path as an heirloom, but Silmarion's son Velondil became the first lord of Andunie, 
and he would pass the Ring of Barahir, and what would eventually be known as the Scepter of Enuminas through his line. And eventually these relics came to Elendil, the last Lord of Andunie and the Faithful, and the first High King of Arnor and Gondor in Middle-earth. From there the ring passed to Isildur and his line, the Kings of Arnor. There is something curious about how the ring went from Isildur to his son Valantil, for as we all know with Isildur's tale, he perished in the Gladden Fields before he could ever come north again after the War of the Last Alliance. This means that either Elendil gave Isildur the Ring of Barahir, who then gave it to his son Velondil while they were all still in Rivendell before the host marched southwards for the War of the Last Alliance, or, and I find this to be more likely, Isildur bore the ring after Elendil perished during the war, but before Isildur was slain in the Gladden Fields, he gave the ring to Otar, his squire, along with the Shards of Narsil, who returned it to Rivendell and Velondil, the new King of Arnor. Since Otar, in the canon, already brought the Shards of Narsil away from the battle, I find it likely that he also bore the Ring of Barahir away from the Gladden Fields too, otherwise the ring would have been lost in the Anduin, just like the One Ring was. Anyway, from Isildur's death in the year 2 of the Third Age, the kings of Arnor and Arthedain bore the Ring of Barahir until the last king of Arthedain, Arvidui, gave it to the snowmen of Fodokel for their aid in 1975 and the king proceeded to climb aboard the elven ship from Linden that sank in the ice bay of Fodokel not soon after. Alike to the death of Isildur, the Dúnedain are lucky that the ring did not sink in the water with their king. The Dúnedain of the north then ransomed the ring back from the snowmen and they took it to Rivendell, where it was kept safe for centuries. This means that the chieftains of the Dúnedain up until Aragorn did not carry the Ring of Barahir. Finally, we come to 2952 of the Third Age, when Elrond told Aragorn of his true name and heritage, and he gave the Ring of Barahir to Aragorn, along with the Shards of Narsil. Aragorn then wore the Ring for almost 30 years before giving it to Arwen Undomiel in Lothlorien in 2980. Thus the two were betrothed, and Arwen carried the Ring for many years if not for the rest of her life. And so Aragorn did not have the Ring of Barahir during the War of the Ring. Nothing more is said of the ring, but I would assume that it would go to Eldarion, the son of Aragorn and Arwen, and it, along with Enduril, and the Scepter of Enuminas would be the heirlooms of the High Kingship, and the House of Telkantar in the Fourth Age, and beyond. And so ends the tale of the Ring of Barahir. From the tale of the Ring of Barahir we see the power of alliance, valor, good fortune, and tradition, for these elements became the symbol of the ring itself. Any symbol would be honored indeed to carry such renown. Thank you all so much for watching, it really means a lot. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections about the Ring of Barahir in the comments below. This is perhaps my favorite ring from the Legendarium, for it marked the lineage of kings and is perhaps one of the oldest known rings in Middle-earth by the end of the Third Age. Also, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for our podcasts and Discord server in the description below. And finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. We are coming up on 200,000 subscribers, and I am just so grateful for the support you all have shown the channel and I over the years. I've got something special planned as a thank you for the milestone, and I'm excited for it. For now, I'll see you all again next week with an epic character history on Finrod Felagund. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.